Hi everyone, Evelina from Arcady here. Today on Inspire, we have Sebastian Marshall, co-founder and head of R&D at Ultraworking, a tech-based company that's building the future of work. It focuses on productivity and creating methodologies for anyone to level up their working efficiency, and is even being used by people at Google and NASA. Sebastian also is a mentor for China Accelerator, as well as a seasoned writer and puts out a popular essay covering actionable insights from history for the Strategic Review every Thursday. Hi, Sebastian. Thanks for joining us today. How are you? Hey, I'm really excited to be here. I know there's a great group with, uh, within the Inspire program here for Arcadia, and I am incredibly hyped to share on how to make sure you're making good progress every single day on building your business, your marketplace. Wonderful. We're super pumped to hear it from you. Um, so you can just jump right in. All right, let's do it. So, uh, so here's what we're going to do. We're going to cover three things today. And my background, what I do at Ultraworking, which is my company, and what I've been obsessed with for many years, is figuring out how to make things happen reliably. In fact, that's my definition of productivity, is the ability to make things happen reliably, right? Because you want to be able to make things happen, and you don't want to be erratic, where sometimes they happen and sometimes they don't. So um, I'm going to have some cool resources for you today. I'm going to talk about some of the things that we do. I'm going to share some best practices that other people do. I'll put all of that up uh, at ultraworking.com slash Arcadia. So, uh, so you'll be able to go download spreadsheets and templates if you're interested in those. Um, and I've built this uh, presentation specifically for what people are doing on Inspire. So if you're watching this many years later on Arcadia's YouTube, you can probably take some inspiration on just being a little more effective, but this is specifically for people in the Inspire Challenge on, on how to get some things done. So there's, there's basically three things that you need to be able to answer. Uh, you need to broadly be knowing what you need to do, just in the big picture, like what do you need to do and are you doing the right things? Then you need to be able to have good work sessions um, on a daily basis throughout the week. So most days you should have a good day, and then when you actually sit down at your computer, to do some work, you need to be able to have a good work session with good concentration and accomplishment right then. So I'm gonna talk about a few different techniques for each one of these. Um, I'm gonna to try to make all of them as simple as possible, but not simpler. Some of them are very simple um, and don't underestimate the power of those. And some of them are a little complicated, but, but we'll, we'll make it really easy for you, okay? So, and again, we'll put all of those up uh, so you can play with spreadsheets and stuff online. I'll do a little screen share when we get to the more technical ones. Nothing that's going to be like, you know, you're not going to need any coding or anything. It's going to be super easy to click around and stuff and help yourself stay organized. So to the question of what should you do, right? What should you do? Um, there's, there's two things that I'm going to recommend here. And I'm kind of running with the assumption that you know a little bit about what your business should be doing and what your business is, right? So probably different people at different skill levels came to Arcadia for the challenge and like some people have no idea. Like I know I want to do something. I know I want to be an entrepreneur, but I'm not sure exactly what I should do. Um, I'm sure they're going to have some great materials on that. And, you know, you could try Googling customer development um, and, and, you know, learning some more about that. That's not exactly what I'm going to cover. I'm going to cover once you broadly know what you're going to do. Okay. You're renting property or you're booking people um, into a spa or you're providing some sort of service. So you broadly know a little bit about what you should do. Now, one of the cool things about Arcadia as I check the platform out is that it's, it's very versatile. You can really build a lot of uh, services on it or a lot of different types of businesses on it. Um, that does make it a little bit challenging for me because if I was talking to people that were just doing real estate or just doing e-commerce, I could be very specific in the suggestions. You're going to need to take these suggestions and make them your own um, and really brainstorm um, and think on how to apply them. But in terms of what should you do, I want to give you two recommendations. Um, the first one is that I think you should find some impact areas. So you should take between one and three hours once ever to come up with some impact areas. What's an impact area? An impact area is something that will determine your success going forwards. That's like a regular consistent thing. All right. So almost every, every human being has things like health on their impact areas. Most people have personal finance on their impact areas. There's a few like that um, that are very common and you can do your own brainstorm on this. I'll give a couple of guidance points and I'll, I'll put some of mine up at uh, ultraworking.com slash arcade if you want to look at mine. Um, but the hard one that you're going to have to really think about is what will really impact my business? What will really make everything successful? And it's really going to vary from business to business. It's going to be a little bit different for each one. All right. So I can give one very specific piece of advice, which is you absolutely 100% should have at least one impact area related to growth or revenue, right? 
Um, why do I say growth or revenue? Well, sometimes you can do things that will help you grow that in the, the short term don't produce revenue, but in the long term will, right? So Facebook famously didn't run ads and didn't charge anything for many years, but they grew very quickly as a business, right? So there's things that you could do, um, you know, that might be related to getting some reviews or really uh, talking to a lot of your customers and getting a lot of intelligence uh, about who your customers are and things like that that could be useful for growth, even though in the short term, maybe that won't turn into revenue. Or you could be trying to build up a mailing list related to a product that you're not going to launch yet, so it won't turn into revenue yet, but you can check on your mailing list subscribers as they grow, that'll turn to revenue later. So you should at the very least have one to two revenue um, or growth items on the list. And if your product or service is something people can repeat purchase, I would strongly recommend putting down repeat purchases. Um, and, and your impact areas should be however uh, they're logical and however you want to think about them in your business, right? So uh, it could be repeat purchases or let's say you're running a vacation spot that people might come back to um, multiple years. You know, that might be having an incredibly good experience um, and ensuring that the last interaction with you that they have uh, reminds them that you care about them and you want to see them again next year, right? So you might say, you know, final happiness in the passing moments might be your impact area. That would be very specific. That's a very niche one, but your impact areas can be whatever you want. So when I like to do this pure blue sky thinking um, about what are my impact areas, what really matter, um, I, I like to go to a cafe with a notebook and no technology. I like to go without a computer, without a smartphone. I like to go with just a notebook. And yeah, every now and then you're like, you wish you could Google something, but I think the advantage of just knowing, okay, I got three hours just to myself, just with my brain to think about my business with a notebook, I think produces a lot of great ideas. And like go somewhere cool. Like if it's Starbucks near you is cool, go there. But if not, Google around and see there's like a really cool cafe, has some cool music, some cool artwork, cool ambiance. Uh, go somewhere cool uh, to do this. And what you want to come up with is really like 10 is the upper bound limit of how many impact areas you want because you're going to look at these weekly. We'll talk about that in a second. And you don't want it to be like paperwork when you do it, right? So what are some other ones that could be on there? Um, you know, if you're going to be hiring and building a staff, then you could have team on there. If you're already managing a team, you could have team on there. Um, if you are both hiring and already managing some people, you could have, you know, whatever your thing related to team or management is, as well as hiring new people or recruiting, um, you could have as an impact area. Um, if you're doing some sort of e-commerce thing where you're, you're reselling something you buy, you might have margins on there. You might want to look at to make sure you're making enough of a net profit every single week on there. Um, if you're running a service, you might have number of inquiries. You might have generating inquiries as one of them. Um, you'll probably want to have something related to product or customer satisfaction on there. Um, and then, you, you know, it, it really varies tremendously. Um, it really varies tremendously. If you're doing any type of content creation, if that's really important to you, you could have content down there. If it's something where you have like an ongoing fan base and it's a lot of regular engagement, you might have engagement on there. Um, the challenge actually is to, to narrow it down to no more than 10, right? Because there's probably 30, 40, 50 things that matter, but which, you know, five to 10 things, eight's pretty good. Really don't go more than 10. 10 is really too much. Having done this for a number of years, I can tell you if you have too many, you'll feel like paperwork to review it and you'll start skimming it. So like, Eight is good, six is okay, maybe not enough. 10 is on the verge of too many, don't go above 10. So you're gonna get all your impact areas down and what you're gonna do with your impact areas is you're gonna look at them every single week and then these can be prompts where you journal a little bit um, about those and it could be just like bullet points, it could be really short. So what you're gonna do is, and I encourage you to do this right now, I encourage you to put a weekly review on the calendar for either Saturday or Sunday, probably maybe Friday or Monday in some instances, right? But, but probably on the weekend, you're gonna do a weekly review. I'm gonna give you the simplest weekly review format ever. Um, and you look at your impact areas after this. As a business owner, you gotta look at your impact areas as well, because you have a more complicated life. Um, but let me give you the simplest weekly review ever. It's just three questions. One, what's really going on? First question is what's really going on? So when you do your weekly review, you'll write down what's really going on, or you'll copy paste it, and you put it in Evernote file, put it in a text file, do it on paper, in a, in a diary, whatever you like. What's really going on? And just answer that. And I like that question, what's really going on is just a prompt to free write. Now, if you had a, you know, a crazy week where there's a million things going on, you said, well, I, you know, I flew over here and I did that and I had this meeting and everything's crazy and my habits are messed up and I'm doing really great on this, you know, getting this partnership, but not enough, I'm not fast enough on the customer service, whatever, it could be really crazy. 
Other times it could be like, hey, this was a very smooth week, it was a very normal week, and you might only write a sentence or two. So these are free prompts um, that you can write as much or as little as you want. Your weekly reviews could be going very fast, or you could sit down and write for an hour on these three questions. The first one though is, what's really going on? Second question is, so what do I do about it? So what do I do about it? So if your first question, what's really going on? Hey, I'm doing great in business, I'm building new products, um, people like it, but my customer service is, is getting kind of shaky, right? I'm not getting back in touch with people fast enough. It's going to tick people off. You wrote that and what's really going on then. And so what do I do about it? It's like, okay, I'm going to start every day with an hour of customer service this week. I want to just get back in touch with customers before I do anything product related, anything expansion related. Cause I got to be aces on that customer service. So you can see that second question follows logically from the first and will just prompt you to get what's really going on out of your head. And so what do I do about it? And the third question I like to ask is, what matters, semicolon, what doesn't? Yeah, that's one question. I kind of cheated a little bit. What matters and what doesn't? All right, what matters, what doesn't? I think it's a really good question to ask yourself um, every single week as a business owner because, you know, so often there's like so many things going on. You get invited to do this and there's some event happening and there's like a networking thing and, you know, your buddy says, hey, let's check out this, this advertising channel. You should get on this and there's this and there's this and there's this and there's this. And usually if you just ask yourself what really matters and what doesn't, there's usually anywhere from one to three things that really matter. They better do a good job on this week. And there's a whole lot of stuff that you're being busy or scurrying around that you should just drop. And this is my prompt. I do these every Sunday at the start of the Sunday. So Sunday is the first day of the week for me and Saturday is the last day of the week for me. So when Saturday ends, I wake up on Sunday, I block the internet, I make sure nothing's going on, I never schedule any appointments from there, and I sit down and I ask myself, what's really going on, so what do I do about it, what matters, what doesn't. I might spend only three to five minutes on that if the week was smooth sailing and nothing unusual happened, or I might spend an hour really thinking, okay, what's really going on, why are things going like this, okay, so what am I gonna do about that? What really matters, what doesn't, I might really think about it. And then what you do after those three questions is you look at your impact areas, right? So I'm, I'm pretty faithful about this. I've done this for many years. So I have hundreds of entries of weekly reviews. Sometimes they're a little more complicated and I look at some other stuff. Um, but then from there, I'll, I'll go through, I'll, ask, I'll answer those three questions and then I'll go through and I'll say, okay, how's my health? How's my personal finance? Okay, how's my, one that I had for a long time on there was management repertoire was an impact area which was, you know, developing management skills, right? Um, you know, that's keeping better track of all the numbers, the team, you know, how we uh, decide and choose projects, the status of projects. I needed to get better at that. So every single week I said, am I learning management fast enough as I was becoming more of a manager, right? Um, I'll look at, uh, I'm a writer, as, as Evelina mentioned, I do a lot of writing. Writing is one of my impact areas. If you're a writer, it probably goes on there. So in writing, I'll mention, you know, what's going on in my recent writing, how long is my backlog, how many articles have I written, um, into the future, you know, because I don't like to, to urgently write them. And so I'll look at all those every single week, and you will too. So you look at whatever health, personal finance, whatever the standard ones are, as well as whatever your growth ones are, whatever your company building ones are. You look at all those. In under an hour, this can give you an extremely good overview of how your life is going and how your business is going. And I don't separate them. Like, so if I haven't been doing fitness or my diet's off or I'm not sleeping well, I put that all down right here. Because if you're a, uh, an underslept you know, a uh, business owner, you're not going to be performing at your best, right? Or if you're unhappy, right? If you feel your quality of life is too low. Um, those are things worth noting down and, and making sure you get them up because you got to take care of yourself. Um, as somebody that's part of a, a growing business, you know, you got you to stay sharp. So this is broadly uh, kind of the 80-20 cut on how I control what should I be doing. Um, is I do the weekly review, and I look at the impact areas every single week and under them, I'll just put bullet points, right? So it's not really fancy. It doesn't need to be precise. It's just for you under health. All right. Like, okay, sleep schedule is good. Diet's good. Uh, only went to the gym once this week. I want to go twice next week. It just looks like that. So it generates a lot of action, you know, under marketing, if that's your impact area, it might be bigger than that. It might be just revenue or it might be more granular than that. You might have, you know, content and conversion and, you know, it really is just going to depend on, on your specific industry. Right. But you know, under marketing, I could say, okay, this promo went really well. This thing did really well on traffic. Hey, we did this thing that was really cool. And everybody really liked it, but we didn't get enough, enough eyes on it. Right. So I'll just jot those down bullet points. Um, really good at just, just throwing off little items and, and showing you the health of everything. So, uh, I do recommend you try out that format, make your own format if you want, but I think that's a very lightweight format that, that works for most people. Um, for the impact areas, give yourselves, you know, give yourself two or three hours once to figure out what do you need to think about every single week um, in your business, all right? So 
that's a pretty good like staying on top of everything and, and, and staying in control of everything. In terms of having good weeks, um, I think that there's two approaches uh, that work pretty well. Um, one works well for a person that, that is pretty diligent and conscientious and works well on a schedule. Um, and the other one is for people like me that, that that's not true. So uh, I, I will show you both of these, all right? So the first one um, that I'll show you is, is what's called calendar painting. Um, and let me go in here and uh, we'll do a little screen share here and I can show you. Um, my friend Taylor Pearson wrote a blog post for my other friend Noah Kagan. They both do this. They're both very organized guys. And what Taylor does, I believe Noah does this too, is they sit and design an ideal calendar for themselves. And a lot of people do this. This isn't just these two gentlemen. Um, and I'll share this particular blog post. It's on Noah Kagan's site, also a genius when it comes to marketing. I recommend him and Taylor very highly. Um, what Taylor did was he designed his ideal schedule, as you can see. And so he's going to try to write in these windows. He's going to have some lunch in these windows. He's going to do his inbox in these windows and so on. And then what he does is when it doesn't actually happen, he'll adjust his calendar to show what it actually did happen in those windows, right? So if you can design a schedule for yourself that's an ideal schedule, right? You know, so he does his weekly review here, right? He does a little weekly review, right? Hangs out with his girlfriend, you know, things like that, right? So that's a pretty good approach right there if you're good at sticking with a calendar. So, so how would you do that? Let's stop the share, we'll come back to it in a second. How would you go about doing that? Well, you'll look at your impact areas and you're gonna say about how much time should I be spending on these and when should I spend that time, right? So everybody has a little bit different rhythms. Maybe you got a day job and you need to figure out, you know, when you're gonna do this on the side, right? Are you gonna wake up before work each day? Are you gonna wake up at 5 a.m. and try to have breakfast and do a routine from 5 to 5.30 and then get a good two hours from 5.30 or 7.30? Well, paint that calendar. Try to figure out what that ideal theoretical schedule looks like for you and put that down. Or are you gonna work on lunch breaks? Are you gonna put that in the evenings? Um, as a tip, um, I recommend if you do do this, that you actually create a second calendar. It's very easy to do on Apple and Google, which are the two most common calendars that people use. Um, I recommend you create a second calendar um, so that you can just kind of click it on and off because this is like your kind of ideal theory thing, but then somebody invites you to an event. You need to be able to look at those. You need to be able to click off your kind of ideal theory calendar um, and see which appointments you've committed to this week and be able to see those, especially when you're new to it. Later on, you'll have color coding or whatever. You'll figure it out. It's pretty intuitive. And I can, I'll link you to this blog post at uh, ultraworking.com slash Arcadia. I'll link this and put up all these resources. Um, but calendar painting is really good if you're the type of person that like shows up when you're supposed to show up to things and is really good at having a good work session when you sit down, right? So who does this not work well for? If your work is the type of thing where you make breakthroughs when you're inspired, very heavily, it works slightly less well, right? So if your business is very, very clear that, you know, during the weekends, you'll look over your financials and your whatever, your, your management processes and stuff. And then it's very easy for you to create content that gets marketing. And then you follow up with the people um, that, that inquire with you. You get on a sales call during these times and they buy or they don't buy and the fulfillment's automatic. Then it's pretty easy and pretty straightforward. On the other hand, if your work is more boom and bust, um, if your work is like you're going to invent something during a moment of inspiration and you know, if you're not feeling it right now, you're going to switch from one activity to another for those types of people, calendar painting isn't as good for them. Um, or some people just don't like working this way. And, and, and I'm one of them. I've tried it out. I don't, I don't, it's not really, it's not my jam. I don't really like it. So I'm going to show you another way that's a little bit more flexible. Um, I'm going to show you another way that's a little more flexible, um, and, and how you can go about doing that and, and how to, uh, how to get some gains from a more flexible method that will still keep you on track. So we'll hit screen share again here and we're getting a screen share. Great. So this is an example of a light spreadsheet. Um, and I will absolutely share my templates with you. Um, so that you can see what mine look like and I'll give you a link so that you can make one. that has got some cool features out of the box, but you can make this on your own in Excel or in open office or whatever you want. So you don't need, uh, to use my templates. Basically what you do is you take activities that you want to be happening every single day and you put them in the left column and you mark them yes if you did them and no if you didn't do them and then you look to hit them every single day, right? So these can include a mix of personal life stuff to keep you sane, like sleeping enough, meditating for 20 minutes, taking supplements, review your project plans, review your most important work for the day, you know, and, and so on and so forth. Um, and then it can get into, you know, actually doing good work and, and going from there. So if you want, 
you can use our templates. And I will pull up one so you can see what it looks like. And basically what you're gonna to wanna to do as you do this um, is you're gonna to wanna to chop up whatever you need to do. So it'll bring it to a screen like this. It'll copy it to your Google Drive. And by the way, if you use our templates, we won't have access to this. It'll just copy to yours and you own it. Um, and you can customize some settings and such. But basically what happens here is when you go through, this is our, our version of this. I think this is a decent way to do it is you put up the start of the day stuff at the top and then any time during the day in the middle, and you put a little end of day routine at the bottom. Um, a few things that could go in here. Um, I think at the start of the day, things related to reviewing your most important work, we use the acronym MIW for that. Um, I think reviewing that, reviewing any project plans, um, reviewing any, uh, anything that's germane that's gonna change how you do things. Um, if, you're, if you're selling any physical products, that might be checking on your stocks of it or checking if you have any uh, uh, prospect appointments or anything coming up today. There you go. Then this is an all-purpose one that you could do, which is 30 minutes on most important work. Just any time during the day, get at least 30 minutes on whatever you've decided is the most important thing. Uh, you could also put in here one sales call or did one outbound outreach or pitched one potential partner or, or whatever. You wanna cut these up so that they're small enough that you could do them and do them every single day. So the more your impact areas connect to activities you're gonna do every single day, either with calendar painting or with lights, then that's gonna go a long way, right? So you could have, during the Arcadia Inspire Challenge, you could have, you know, did one Arcadia task, right? You could have on here, you know, reached out to one partner, you know, like one business partner, uh, you know, uh, like a partnership via, via email. Um, so you could put on here whatever you want, and then as you do these, you know, you get up, you make your bed, you mark that you did it. If your project plan is not current, you know, then you're gonna wanna, you know, you know, you're gonna wanna like note that and fix that, right? So the more you set this up to correspond to your business and your life and what you wanna have happening, then all you need to do is turn these green every day, right? So your goal is just, okay, I did 30 minutes, most important work, okay, I logged in Arcadia, I did it, and so on and so forth. And with this template, if you, you know, feel free to use this or feel free to make your own, you can get the gist of it by looking at it. This will copy over. Whatever you do in week one will copy over here. The more your life is changing, the more you're gonna to wanna to revisit lights and tune them up and maybe even edit it and start a new template um, more often, right? I like to refresh mine roughly every week. This template has four weeks in it uh, automatically by default. Um, create a new one and rethink it from scratch about once a month. As a business owner, things can change quite quickly. And if things go radically different where you make a major breakthrough, I would redo your lights from scratch. And this is something, again, that I do at the end of every week. So by putting these on here, you can see how many days did I actually do whatever my tasks are, right? So you look at this and you can see, okay, that's like a good day if these are all green. And, you know, whenever your business isn't really going, you'll be able to say, okay, well, like how come nothing's really happening? It's like if this one was like make a sales call and it's like no, 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 no then there you go, then you know why. So coming back for a second, um, I strongly, strongly, strongly recommend um, that you start off if you're trying lights by making it more easy, more easy um, than you think, and then increase the difficulty if you're having a success rate above 70%. And make it easier if you're succeeding significantly less than 70%. So it's pretty well validated in psychology that, that failure hurts a little more than success feels good, right? Like people don't like to fail, it bums them out, it messes up your morale. So 70% is kind of an arbitrary number, but I think it works pretty good. That's more than two successes for every failure, right? Um, with lights, similar to, similar to what I said about impact areas, again, make sure it doesn't become paperwork. When, I start, when, when, when you start lights, I'd really recommend starting again 10 to 12 at most. Um, I'm up to something like 35 on mine, but I got there very gradually. I got there very, very gradually. And actually, really recently, I'm actually not at 35. I'm back down to 25. Really recently, it got really crazy. There's a lot of things going on, so I cut 10 of them off there, right? So I, I made it more simple. So you want to be succeeding about 70%, right? So, you know, what I try to do personally is I try to have uh, two two-hour work sessions, a day. I try to have two hours of most important work in the first three hours of the day, another two hours at any point in the day. 
right? And that's what I mark green, but be realistic with yourself. If this is your full-time thing, then you, you quite possibly can and, and should do that. But if this is a part-time thing or you're not doing anywhere near that now, start by trying to do 30 minutes once a day of your most important work on your business or do 30 minutes on marketing and 30 minutes on product improvement or whatever, but keep it really like too easy. You don't have to stop because it said do 30 minutes your most important work. That doesn't mean you have to stop. That doesn't mean you have to start and you have to check it green and go, ah, oh, that feels good. And it sounds so stupid, uh, but like the motivating factor of checking something green of like, I made my bed and I'm going to go click, click this thing. It's going to go green. Look, we've had a lot of people use light spreadsheets. We have like top attorneys use it who bring in like $1.5 million a year. And they said, oh, it's so satisfying to turn the thing green. You know, we have people that are like engineers, that are programmers, that are business owners. The people he's doing is so many intense, crazy things that are like, I really like checking the box green. It's like a human thing. I mean, like this is why people like things like World of Warcraft so much is like, you just like, you click a thing, you leveled up, some sparkly stuff happens around your guy. We've built, I'm not kidding. Like we've built some, I mean, okay, it's not going to be as addictive as World of Warcraft or something, but like, look, you get to click a green and you get a little sparkly thing. It's like nice, it's a little, right? So use that, you know, use that momentum for yourself, but set your targets almost too easy and then just do more of it. Just that's your minimum baseline. And those should connect with your impact areas. If there's an impact area that needs to move every single week, then you should have something um, on your lights or in your standard calendar painting that, uh, that, that, that corresponds to that. All right. The last thing I want to talk about that we can get into some Q&A um, is, is actually sitting down and having a good work session. This is something I want to really encourage you. Some people are already great at this. Maybe you had just like parents that were really smart and they were all like one of your parents was a physicist. One of them was a teacher. Your physicist mom taught you how to reason from first principles. Your teacher dad taught you how to take notes and outline and think on paper. And, okay. But if, you know, if that's you, great, congrats. You know, you won, you, you know, you won that the parental lottery for a lot of us. We didn't really learn how to work well. Our parents were like, yeah, you'll just, you'll figure it out. And school doesn't really teach this. So the ability to sit down, concentrate and have a good work session is underrated. I would recommend if you can't reliably sit down and have a good work session right now, I would start searching for different methodologies and trying them until you find one that works for you. I'm going to talk about two. I'm going to talk about a really lightweight one. I'm going to talk about a slightly more complicated one that we've built so you could try either of these out at your prerogative. The simplest one to help you keep your concentration and momentum going, I can show you on a little notebook here. That would be, so I use four colors of pens, which is great. Um, you can do this with at least two though. Um, I like to have four. And there's a lot of advantages to that. And, and I might put something about that on the, the thing so we don't go long on that. But get a blue pen and a black pen. Write down your to-dos in blue. Write down what you're doing in real time in black. And then I think this should come through. You can have here at the top, you just write down a list of tasks in blue. And then on the side, as you start doing them, you write down the corresponding entry in black. And you cross it off here when it's done and write the next one. Very good for chaining a bunch of little items together on momentum. So I had like, so, you know, I was going through and I was like, okay, take some measurements. I was doing some personal finance stuff. I had some things to clean. I had to go through some receipts, a bunch of boring little stuff here. So I wrote them all down. I just crossed them off. So I wrote down the other side of it, like receipts. Then when it was done, I crossed it off. So you could just see at the end of it, what I actually do, you have a list and it's, it's very easy to go back and forth. And if it's not on a list, you don't do it. Um, if you think it's something new, you write it at the bottom. So that's a great way to stay on track with little tiny stuff, right? So if you're running a property business and you were like, okay, call so-and-so back for a testimonial, follow up with this magazine that's thinking of featuring our property, you know, uh, put the brochure in the mail to this person, follow up with the photographer about the new shots in the new unit, you know, contact, you know, my sister who said that there's a better type of soap we should use. This is kind of like an overwhelming amount of stuff. Just write it all down in blue, write it in black as you start and cross it off. Sounds stupid, but these are the types of small things that I recommend you try out if you don't already know how to have a good work session. And there's like hundreds of methodologies like this. People have blogged about it. You know, you can go to Quora and search uh, famous people. You could go Google famous people. You know, what does Elon Musk do for his to-dos? Um, first round is a, uh, is first round capitals, a, um, a venture capital fund that has done a lot of interviews um, with people has a lot of guides. So you could check them out, but like start searching, ask friends of yours. That's where I've gotten a lot from it. A lot of times the highly productive people aren't online and social media blogging about how productive they are. So you miss out. So ask good friends of yours. What do they do? How do they organize it? Um, I'll show you one more. It's a little bit technical. Um, and, and this is, this is what we do. Uh, one of the things that we made is a little free piece of tech at ultra working. This one's a little more technical, but I think it's, it's really cool and, and you might like it. Some people have had a lot of success with this. So uh, we'll pull that up for you. 
this one, again, I'll share the links is, is something we call work cycles. It's a structured way of thinking about your work. Um, and, uh, again, it'll ask you, do you want to make a copy of it? And you can make your own copy when you do. And what this will do is it gives you about a 10 minutes of a prompt here. Um, it gives you about a 10 minute prompt here to say, okay, if you're going to have a good work session for the next X hours, so this is working in 30 minute blocks with 10 minutes off. You can actually play with these numbers, including the start time and how many 30 minute blocks of work you want to do. Um, so you could play with that and you could say, okay, I want to do, you know, five cycles. I want to do four cycles, right? Whatever. So you go down to four and now it's, you know, it's a little less than four hours, right? So, and then this will adjust. So, so now that's four cycles happens to be unsurprisingly three hours, right? So what it'll do is it'll say, what am I trying to accomplish? Why is this important and valuable? How will I know this is complete? Um, any risks, hazards? Is this concrete and measurable? Is there anything else noteworthy? You fill this out before you get started. Uh, the first time you do it, it might take you a little while because you're like thinking through it. Once you've done this for a while, it's five or 10 minutes. I actually fill this out before every major deep work session that I do. Because um, I list why am I, what am I trying to accomplish? Um, why do I do that? Uh, because then I can actually refer back to this if I'm unsure, but it also forces me at the beginning of a session instead of just do some work to think about what the accomplishments are. I like to answer why is this important and valuable for two reasons. First, it increases motivation a little bit, right? So sometimes I have to answer like 100 emails. And like, you know, I like people, but like 100 emails, like sometimes it's kind of a headache, right? So I'll wind up writing here, why is it important and valuable? Well, hey, there's a lot of opportunities and there's a lot of great people in here and there's, there's a lot of cool things that can happen, right? So that's motivating. The other thing this does is it helps that strategic direction. So when you write why something's valuable, so if you say redesign my website, right? If you say, why is this important and valuable? Because I've done more interesting, high credibility projects, my website's not showing my credibility off, that will actually tune 100 little decisions you make over the next three hours. Little tiny decisions related to color scheme, related to how much work is enough. So it's useful to write that down. How I know it's complete? Okay, it's obvious if you're doing your taxes, you know, it's when you've hit submit and you've, you've paid the, the, the tax authority. Um, but sometimes it's really non-obvious. If you're doing a redesign or a logo or a marketing plan, you actually need to decide what's done. A lot of people get in trouble because they don't know when something's complete. Then you can note in advance, is there any hazards? This could be internal, like procrastination or versions. could be external, like the plumber's coming or your kids are coming home from school. Is it concrete or subjective? Useful, just note anything noteworthy. And then the way work cycles works is it gives you these like nice little boxes to fill out. What am I trying to accomplish this cycle? How I get started? Are there hazards present and energy and morale? So you'll just fill these out each cycle. Um, you'll fill these out and you know, what am I going to try to accomplish this cycle? It's like, uh, you know, brainstorm key elements, elements for new marketing plan, put that in there, right? How I get started, you know, open up Q1's marketing plan if you've already done one and reread it. Any hazards present like grocery delivery. And then it asks you, what's your energy? And your morale by energy we mean are you like dehydrated or hungry or sleepy morale is how do you relate to your work feeling great feeling not great and at the end of it you mark down did you get it done or not so you set a timer for yourself for 30 minutes you mark down that it's done at the end of it it'll actually give you a graph if i filled out all of it i would show it would show you but it'll actually should graph your energy and morale over time that's kind of neat there's like a little debrief feel free to play with this if you want um i think it works pretty well a lot of top people really like this but you know it's feel free to try it. A lot of people really like it. Um, if it's not for you, that's no problem. Um, but you should find a way to sit and hone your concentration if it doesn't come naturally to you. So you should learn how to cut up work sessions. And again, there's a lot of things that I won't go to the trouble of filling out a whole thing for and do cycles on. This is what I do when I have a bunch of miscellaneous unsorted tasks, right? That's just write it in blue, cross it off in black, right? So that's something that I strongly, strongly, strongly encourage. Um, and you know, to kind of wrap up and then get in the Q and a, I, I think broadly, whenever you're not getting anything you want in life, right? Whenever anything in life or business is not going exactly how you want, it's always at some level of time that you don't understand. So maybe you don't get the big picture, what really feeds into success, right? Or maybe you're not having a good right now. Maybe you're not being able to sit down and concentrate and focus on your work, or maybe you don't know how to have a good day, or maybe you don't know how to string multiple good days together, or you don't know how to have a good week, right? I went at the really, the, the big picture level, it's brainstorm the impact areas are going to determine success in the business, and then look at those every single week, because that'll kind of self-correct. Whatever your ideas are, I don't think we're doing enough for marketing, so this is what I'm going to do this week, then next week, if it worked, great, do more of it. If it didn't, okay, back to the drawing board. 
um, and then learn how to have reliably good days. You can either try calendar painting or lights. Um, I'll give you the template for lights. Uh, we'll put all that up at ultraworking.com slash Arcadia. Um, and then be able to actually sit down and have a good work session right now in the moment, multiple times a day, at least once a day, ideally twice a day or more. Um, if you could do all of those, so you can connect the right now to having a good day, to having multiple good days in a good week, and those all connect to the month, the quarter, the year, and, and a whole marvelous life, then you get what you want and you have some good stuff. So I hope this tech works uh, pretty well for everybody. I'm, I'm happy to riff and take any other questions, but I would really encourage you to take these things seriously. By, by taking one to three hours to set these things up once or twice, you can really stay on track um, and ensure you're really working on the key impact areas of your business every single day, every single week, and making a lot of progress. Awesome. Thank you so much. That was really interesting. Um, have a bunch of questions. <laughs> Please. Going deeper into what you were showing us before with calendar painting and flexible light scheduling spreadsheets and stuff, for those who are more, I guess, inclined to being very organized and like the calendar painting method or want to try it out, what's the best way of keeping track of actuality and reality versus your ideal is like, should they be checking these things daily, you know, where they go to the spreadsheet and then just be like, okay, so this is what I did. Is it a process of every hour they sit down and say, what did I actually do this hour? Um, and how long does this typically take to actually, you know, hone as a daily thing or weekly thing that you do and that it becomes part of your life? Cause it kind of seems like it could be a lot of work. Yeah. So, I mean, that's the first, so well said, and that's the reason to not put 30 things on there is because the minute it starts to feel like paperwork, it means you've got too much right now. When the experience that people have that get on this, if you start small and then it prompts you to do behavior that you otherwise wouldn't right? that's very valuable for your life. And at the end of the week, your life is much better off. It does that a few times and you're like, okay, this is paying for itself. And then you can make it a little more complex if you want. And there's certainly, Many, many stories of people not eating junk food or going to bed on time because there were lights on their light spreadsheet. Like, I've heard many, 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 many stories of this and I've done it myself. So like for, for whatever reason, a lot of times if it's like, you know, if you have like don't eat sweets, you're trying to not eat sweets this week, for whatever reason, it's like, okay, you're in the airport lounge when you're flying, there's like a nice cake, you know, you eat it, whatever. But if you have like don't eat sweets, you're like, I don't want to check it red, <laughs> right? I don't want to check it red. Um, for calendar painting, again, that's like going to require you to be you know, for that to stay functional and operational, you're going to need to like be a person that likes to move boxes around and stuff. What Taylor Pearson does um, is he puts his ideal calendar together and then he actually edits in real time and writes what he actually did. So at the end of the week, his calendar will show what he actually did. And a number of people that do calendar painting, a friend of mine's a nonprofit director and inventor. Um, she's a mechanical engineer and inventor and she does calendar painting and she does the exact same thing, which is, she starts with like the theory of here's what I want, but then she actually writes down, I guess in real ish time, what she actually did with each one of those blocks. So if that doesn't sound like you're into that, then you probably calendar paintings not for you. Um, I think lights, uh, putting a light spreadsheet together is really lightweight and flexible. You can look at that at the start of the day, maybe once in the middle of the day and the end of the day, right? Or you could go back to it and use it kind of like a checklist if it's comprehensive enough of like, okay, what should I do next? You look at your lights and you do any one that's not done. Um, but you can look at lights two or three times a day and, and that can only take a minute or two to keep updated. That's, that's really cheap and easy. Now I'll say one thing, both of these can serve as an example of something I call a keystone, a keystone, which is something that can point at everything else in your life that matters. Right? So I think everyone needs one. Um, another one that you could use um, is some people like to, and this is even more technical and geeky is you could go into something like OmniFocus or any very smart task list and you can have it automatically regenerate the same tasks. So you could have it create for you every Sunday, do a weekly review. So you don't have to go in and add do a weekly review. It will just automatically every Sunday get popped up and that'll be on your to-do list. So there's like a series of projects and stuff and it can, you can make it automatically create them. So you could have it every three months or six months. It says book a dentist appointment and that just like pops up. So you could fill all that out with what you want to pop up and then just be checking it off. And of course you can manually add tasks as well. Um, I think that's even more technical than this, but, but for some people that works pretty well. Any one of those, like an OmniFocus, like a smart task list or a uh, calendar painting or, you know, a lot of old school executives do the notebook thing where they keep long running lists in pen of what they want to do. And then the next day they turn the paper over, they hand copy the ones that didn't get done and they just get started with it. And they put new items at the bottom as they go. 
but I think everyone needs to have a keystone, which is one, one, one place you look at that points at everything else in your life that, you know, if you look at the one place, you'll be all right. If you don't have that, it is totally work to install it and you'll have to watch it like a hawk and really be fanatic about paying attention to it until you have it. Because if I have a light spreadsheet running, right, I can have on the light spreadsheet look at my financials, right? Or if you're calendar painting, you could have on there once a week or once a day, look at the financials, right? Or if you're doing the, the, the paper method, you could have, you know, like one template sheet in the front that you look at and you copy onto it, look at the financials, or you could put an OmniFocus, look at the financials. But if you have nothing to look at to know if you're on top of everything, then you just won't look at your financials enough if that's something you need to do. So I think everyone needs a keystone of some sort, both calendar painting or lights or OmniFocus or the, the old school executive paper thing, which has its limits because you can't it's very hard to refer to it later, but can work. Um, but I think everybody does need a keystone and it is hard work to install one, but if you don't have one, you're like not serious about life and your life is going to be really sporadic and haphazard and much less happy and much less productive. And it's like, people are like, Oh no, I don't want to have to like, look at this list. It's like, no, no, no. You look at it and you know, you're on top of everything. You don't have to remember if you have a parking ticket to pay or, you know, if you committed to some favor that you're going to do for somebody, but you didn't write it down, you know, like you go crazy if you don't, unless you have a not complicated life where you're in something like the military where people like you know, set your schedule for you. If your life is complex and there's many moving pieces, you need a keystone. It is work to get one installed. Lights is pretty lightweight, um, no pun intended. So that's one to try out if you want to go lightweight. It really is. It looks kind of complicated. When you click around with it, you can play with it. It's so easy. It's, it's really not hard to set up and to stay on top. You just have to look at it three times a day and mark everything green or red. Yeah, definitely lots of, I think that's a really good point about the keystone. I think that sometimes, you know, you just rely on your memory to, you know, remember, oh, I have to like grab dog food or I have to, you know, renew my passport. And then like three weeks later, your passport's expired and you're like, right. <laughs> yep. Um, <laughs> so on the subject of lights, you were talking about most important work on there. Um, obviously everybody tends to think, you know, that everything's really important and, at, you know, you have a hard time triaging your work. What are some tips you could give to everybody to help really make them focus on what really is your most important work? For people in Arcadia Inspire, it's probably revenue related. Like if you, like, uh, I would be, if you told me you want to get a business going and you told me you weren't going to work on revenue every single day, I'd be very concerned. Like, okay, maybe you're doing something weird where you're like going to invent some new pharmaceutical something that's going to go through stage, whatever clinical trials, and then in seven years, you know, okay, like if you're doing something like, like uh, unusual, like if you're an inventor and you're just doing pure inventions, and if the invention works, then it'll be easy to license and patent and whatever. Okay, fine. But, but for the vast majority, especially small business owners, like get revenue and, and, and like focus a lot on that. And most people don't because it often involves marketing or sales, both of which are scary. You get rejected. Um, but yeah, if you're not doing a half an hour, like really a half an hour is not even enough, but if you're not doing a half an hour of revenue generation every day, like you're in trouble. Um, and, and really that probably should be like half of your time. Um, the other thing is, is I think most people don't talk to their customers enough. I don't know if you need to do that every single day, but I really go out of my way to talk to my customers a lot. Um, because they will just teach you how to improve your product or how to do your service better. And I feel like people feel, feel awkward doing this, but you'll find if you just do it a little while, you'll find it's delightful, right? So you're doing babysitting, right? If you call up, you know, you're babysitting little Timmy and, and you call up Timmy's mom, call up Timmy's mom the next day and say, Hey, you know what? Uh, Timmy's mom, you know, I, I had a really delightful time yesterday with Timmy. I think he had a nice time. I just want to call you and say, how'd I do? You think I did a good job? Was Timmy happy? How was it when I left? Is there anything else I could have done? Was everything clean? Did, did he enjoy the meal that we fixed? What, whatever, right? She, she's going to think you're the greatest person ever. Like that you shouldn't feel weird about doing that. That's like, that's totally cool. You know, I think, um, I think again, if you're a small business owner, if you have a, a, a vacation property in the South of France that people book, if you call somebody up and say, Hey, you know, I'm, I'm from, you know, the, the Chateau in Nice and, uh, you know, I, I want to just personally call you. I'm the owner. I want to personally call you and say, thank you for staying at the property. It looked lovely after you checked out. It was like nobody had been there, but do you mind if I ask you, did you enjoy it? Was there anything that could be done different? Did any of the fixtures not work? How did you find the furniture? Did you notice the artwork? Did you think about it at all? How did you like the little chocolates we left? Okay. Thank you so much for your time. Merci beaucoup. You know, uh, like people are going to be delighted. No, they're going to be so happy with you. So you can email people and say, Hey, would you mind talking and schedule it? Or depending on the industry, sometimes it'd be weird, sometimes it wouldn't. You might be able to just call them. I think a, 
a, a property rental, you could probably just call the person. I think a babysitter certainly could just call the person. If your thing is more automated, more tech, it's like, wait, why are you calling me? Even then, I think it probably wouldn't weird people out. They'd like it, but you could shoot them an email and say, hey, I own the place. Don't be formal. Don't pretend you're a big corporation. Just be like, hey, I own the business. Hey, can I give you a call sometime? I'd love to just hear what you think. It's not a sales pitch, but I just really want to make people happy and do a good job. So talking to your customers is another one. So probably those two, but revenue, like you better have something marketing or sales related on what you're doing pretty much every day. Cause like, I mean, that's, that's how business goes. If you're not getting revenue, you don't have business. That is solid advice. Definitely. Like, yeah, you got to make money to actually keep on going. And then, I mean, customers are the people that actually are buying your, or renting or purchasing. So they're key to actually creating your business. <laughs> so you better know what they want to do. Um, I think that really ties in well to what we've learned from our other speakers and what is in general, everything's very customer driven. You really have to know your industry um, or at least take time to learn about it. But so last question that I have for you is what is one piece of advice that you'd like to give everyone today? Figure out, figure out what would make a difference if you did a little bit of it each day and do it the first thing when you wake up. Like maybe the second thing after you make a coffee, but like get it in the first hour. Like whatever's gonna make a difference, do it in the first hour of the day. And then be very pleased with yourself and call the day a win if you did that only, right? So there's two things that we can get in trouble with, right? We can get in trouble when we get so busy that we don't do the real important thing. We can also get in trouble when we're doing pretty good, but we keep beating ourselves up. Cause like, oh man, why aren't I doing better? So figure out the thing that's gonna make a real difference. Maybe it's making a sales call, maybe it's uploading a new product to your website, maybe it's following up with a customer, maybe you know it's probably revenue or, or follow up or something like that, <laughs> maybe it's product improvements. And just nail that right away and then be like, okay, I win. Now what do I wanna do for the rest of the day? Give it a try, it might be, might be a game changer for you. Yeah, I definitely think that sometimes it's hard to, you know, sometimes you end the day and you're like, oh man, I didn't do anything or like, what did I do? So getting that first little win in is really nice to have. All right. Well, thank you so much for joining us, Sebastian. Um, if anybody wanted to get in touch with you or know what you're up to, talk about your favorite book, what's the best way for them to reach you? Uh, yeah. So you need to check us out at ultraworking.com. Um, again, we'll put up everything related uh, to this talk at ultraworking.com slash Arcadia. So spreadsheets will give you lights and work cycles and all that if you want to try any of them out. And, uh, and I'm also on Twitter is at Sebast Marsh. So feel free to shoot me a message if you like this talk or uh, you know, if you have any questions or anything on your mind. Awesome. Thank you so much again for joining us, Sebastian. And I hope that today everybody enjoyed uh, listening in on today's session and hopefully everybody becomes a bit more productive and tries out leveling up their work efficiency. Until next time, be inspired.